Electrochemistry is the branch of physical chemistry that studies chemical reactions which take place at the interface of an electrode, usually a solid metal or a semiconductor, and an ionic conductor, the electrolyte. These reactions involve electric charges moving between the electrodes and the electrolyte. Thus electrochemistry deals with the interaction between electrical energy and chemical change. When a chemical reaction is caused by an externally supplied current, as in electrolysis, or if an electric current is produced by a spontaneous chemical reaction as in a battery, it is called an electrochemical reaction. Chemical reactions where electrons are transferred directly between molecules and or atoms are called oxidation reduction or reactions. In general, electrochemistry describes the overall reactions when individual redox reactions are separate but connected by an external electric circuit and an intervening electrolyte. History 16th to 18th century developments understanding of electrical matters began in the 16th century. During this century, the English scientist William Gilbert spent 17 years experimenting with magnetism in, to a lesser extent, electricity. For his work on magnets, Gilbert became known as the father of magnetism. He discovered various methods for producing and strengthening magnets. In 1663, the German physicist Otto von Guericke created the first electric generator, which produced static electricity by applying friction in the machine. The generator was made of a large sulfur ball cast inside a glass globe, mounted on a shaft. The ball was rotated by means of a crank and an electric spark was produced when a pad was rubbed against the ball as it rotated. The globe could be removed and used as source for experiments with electricity. By the mid-18th century the French chemist Charles-François de Cisterne du Fay had discovered two types of static electricity, and that like charges repel each other whilst unlike charges attract. Dufay announced that electricity consisted of two fluids, vitreous, or positive, electricity, and resinous, or negative, electricity. This was the two-fluid theory of electricity, which was to be opposed by Benjamin Franklin's one-fluid theory later in the century. In 1785, Charles Augustin de Coulomb developed the law of electrostatic attraction as an outgrowth of his attempt to investigate the law of electrical repulsions as stated by Joseph Priestley in England. In the late 18th century the Italian physician and anatomist Luigi Galvani marked the birth of electrochemistry by establishing a bridge between chemical reactions and electricity on his essay, De Viri Bis Electricitatis in Motu Muscularis. A commentarius in 1791 where he proposed a nervio-electrical substance on biological life forms. In his essay Galvani concluded that animal tissue contained a heretofore neglected innate vital force, which he termed animal electricity, which activated nerves and muscles spanned by metal probes. He believed that this new force was a form of electricity in addition to the natural form produced by lightning or by the electric eel and torpedo ray as well as the artificial form produced by friction. Galvanized scientific colleagues generally accepted his views, but Alessandro Volta rejected the idea of an animal electric fluid, replying that the frog's legs responded to differences in metal temper, composition, and bulk. Galvani refuted this by obtaining muscular action with two pieces of the same material. 19th century In 1800, William Nicholson and Johann Wilhelm Ritter succeeded in decomposing water into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis. Soon thereafter Ritter discovered the process of electroplating. He also observed that the amount of metal deposited and the amount of oxygen produced during an electrolytic process depended on the distance between the electrodes. By 1801, Ritter observed thermoelectric currents and anticipated the discovery of thermoelectricity by Thomas Johann Seebeck. By the 1810s, William Hyde Wollaston made improvements to the galvanic cell. 
Sir Humphrey Davies' work with electrolysis led to the conclusion that the production of electricity in simple electrolytic cells resulted from chemical action and that chemical combination occurred between substances of opposite charge. This work led directly to the isolation of sodium and potassium from their compounds and of the alkaline earth metals from theirs in 1808. Hans Christian Orsted's discovery of the magnetic effect of electric currents in 1820 was immediately recognized as an epoch-making advance, although he left further work on electromagnetism to others. André Marie Ampère quickly repeated Orsted's experiment and formulated them mathematically. In 1821, Estonian-German physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck demonstrated the electrical potential in the juncture points of two dissimilar metals when there is a heat difference between the joints. In 1827, the German scientist Georg Ohm expressed his law in this famous book Die Galvanische Kette. Mathematisch Berberitet, in which he gave his complete theory of electricity. In 1832, Michael Faraday's experiments led him to state his two laws of electrochemistry. In 1836, John Daniel invented a primary cell which solved the problem of polarization by eliminating hydrogen gas generation at the positive electrode. Later results revealed that alloying the amalgamated zinc with mercury would produce a higher voltage. William Grove produced the first fuel cell in 1839. In 1846, Wilhelm Weber developed the electrodynamometer. Svante Arrhenius published his thesis in 1884 on Recherches sur la conductibilité galvanique des électrolytes. From his results, the author concluded that electrolytes, when dissolved in water, become to varying degrees split or dissociated into electrically opposite positive and negative ions. In 1886, Paul Erault and Charles M. Hall developed an efficient method to obtain aluminium using electrolysis of molten alumina. In 1894, Friedrich Ostwald concluded important studies of the conductivity and electrolytic dissociation of organic acids. Walther Hermann Nernst developed the theory of the electromotive force of the voltaic cell in 1888. In 1889, he showed how the characteristics of the current produced could be used to calculate the free energy change in the chemical reaction producing the current. He constructed an equation, known as Nernst equation, which related the voltage of a cell to its properties. In 1898, he explained the reduction of nitrobenzene in stages of the cathode and this became the model for other similar reduction processes. 20th century and recent developments In 1902, the Electrochemical Society was founded. In 1909, Robert Andrews Millikan began a series of experiments to determine the electric charge carried by a single electron. In 1923, Johannes Nikolaus Bronsted and Martin Lowry published essentially the same theory about how acids and bases behave, using an electrochemical basis. In 1937, Antisilius developed the first sophisticated electrophoretic apparatus. Some years later, he was awarded the 1948 Nobel Prize for his work in protein electrophoresis. A year later, in 1949, the International Society of Electrochemistry was founded. By the 1960s-1970s quantum electrochemistry was developed by Rivas Dogonadze and his pupils. Principles Oxidation and reduction The term redox stands for reduction-oxidation. It refers to electrochemical processes involving electron transfer to or from a molecule or ion changing its oxidation state. This reaction can occur through the application of an external voltage or through the release of chemical energy. Oxidation and reduction describe the change of oxidation state that takes place in the atoms, ions or molecules involved in an electrochemical reaction. Formally, oxidation state is the hypothetical charge that an atom would have if all bonds to atoms of different elements were 100% ionic. An atom or ion that gives up an electron to another atom or ion has its oxidation state increase. 
and the recipient of the negatively charged electron has its oxidation state decrease. For example, when atomic sodium reacts with atomic chlorine, sodium donates one electron and attains an oxidation state of plus one. Chlorine accepts the electron and its oxidation state is reduced to minus one. The sign of the oxidation state actually corresponds to the value of each ion's electronic charge. The attraction of the differently charged sodium and chlorine ions is the reason they then form an ionic bond. The loss of electrons from an atom or molecule is called oxidation, and the gain of electrons is reduction. This can be easily remembered through the use of mnemonic devices. Two of the most popular are oil rig and Leo. The lion says, Gur. Oxidation and reduction always occur in a paired fashion, such that one species is oxidized when another is reduced. For cases where electrons are shared between atoms with large differences in electronegativity, the electron is assigned to the atom with the largest electronegativity in determining the oxidation state. The atom or molecule which loses electrons is known as the reducing agent or reductant, and the substance which accepts the electrons is called the oxidizing agent or oxidant. Thus, the oxidizing agent is always being reduced in a reaction. The reducing agent is always being oxidized. Oxygen is a common oxidizing agent, but not the only one. Despite the name, of an oxidation reaction does not necessarily need to involve oxygen. In fact, a fire can be fed by an oxidant other than oxygen. Fluorine fires are often unquenchable, as fluorine is an even stronger oxidant than oxygen. For reactions involving oxygen, the gain of oxygen implies the oxidation of the atom or molecule to which the oxygen is added. In organic compounds, such as butane or ethanol, the loss of hydrogen implies oxidation of the molecule from which it is lost. This follows because the hydrogen donates its electron in covalent bonds with non-metals but it takes the electron along when it is lost. Conversely, loss of oxygen or gain of hydrogen implies reduction. Balancing redox reactions Electrochemical reactions in water are better understood by balancing redox reactions using the ion-electron method where H plus O minus ion H2O and electrons are added to cells half reactions for oxidation and reduction. Acidic medium in acid medium H plus ions and water are added to half reactions to balance the overall reaction. For example, when manganese reacts with sodium bismuthate, unbalanced reaction, Mn2 plus plus NaBio3 by 3 plus plus MnO4 minus oxidation. 4H2O plus Mn2 plus MnO4 minus plus 8H plus plus 5E minus reduction. 2E minus plus 6H plus plus by O3 minus by 3 plus plus 3H2O. Finally, the reaction is balanced by multiplying the number of electrons from the reduction half reaction to oxidation half reaction and vice versa and adding both half reactions. Thus solving the equation, 8H2O plus 2MN2 plus 2MNO4 minus plus 16H plus plus 10E minus 10E minus plus 30H plus plus 5 by O3 minus 5 by 3 plus plus 15H2O reaction balanced. 14H plus plus 2MN2 plus plus 5 Nabia 37H2O plus 2MNO4 minus plus 5 by 3 plus plus 5 Na plus basic medium in basic medium O minus ions and water are added to half reactions to balance the overall reaction. For example, on reaction between potassium permanganate and sodium sulfite, unbalanced reaction. KMNO4 plus Na2SO3 plus H2O MNO2 plus Na2SO4 plus Co reduction. 3E minus plus 2H2O plus MNO4 minus MNO2 plus 4O minus oxidation. 2O minus plus SO32 minus SO42 minus plus H2O plus 2E minus the same procedure as followed on acid medium by multiplying electrons to opposite half reactions solve the 
equation thus balancing the overall reaction. 6E minus plus 4H2O plus 2MnO4 minus 2MnO2 plus 8O minus 6O minus plus 3SO32 minus 3SO42 minus plus 3H2O plus 6E minus equation balanced. 2KMnO4 plus 3 Na 2SO3 plus H2O2 MnO2 plus 3 Na 2SO4 plus 2 Co neutral medium The same procedure as used on acid medium is applied. For example on balancing using electron ion method to complete combustion of propane. Unbalanced reaction. C3H8 plus O2 CO2 plus H2O reduction. 4H plus plus O2 plus 4E minus 2H2O oxidation. 6H2O plus C3H8 3CO2 plus 20E minus plus 20H plus as in acid and basic medium. Electrons which were used to compensate oxidation changes are multiplied to opposite half reactions, thus solving the equation. 20H plus plus 5O2 plus 20E minus 10H2O6 H2O plus C3H8 3CO2 plus 20E minus plus 20H plus equation balanced. C3H8 plus 5O2 3CO2 plus 4H2O electrochemical cells. An electrochemical cell is a device that produces an electric current from energy released by a spontaneous redox reaction. This kind of cell includes the galvanic cell or voltaic cell, named after Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta. Both scientists who conducted several experiments on chemical reactions and electric current during the late 18th century. Electrochemical cells have two conductive electrodes. The anode is defined as the electrode where oxidation occurs and the cathode is the electrode where the reduction takes place. Electrodes can be made from any sufficiently conductive materials, such as metals, semiconductors, graphite, and even conductive polymers. In between these electrodes is the electrolyte, which contains ions that can freely move. The galvanic cell uses two different metal electrodes each in an electrolyte where the positively charged ions are the oxidized form of the electrode metal. One electrode will undergo oxidation and the other will undergo reduction. The metal of the anode will oxidize, going from an oxidation state of zero to a positive oxidation state and become an ion. At the cathode, the metal ion in solution will accept one or more electrons from the cathode and the ion's oxidation state is reduced to zero. This forms a solid metal that electrode deposits on the cathode. The two electrodes must be electrically connected to each other, allowing for a flow of electrons that leave the metal of the anode and flow through this connection to the ions at the surface of the cathode. This flow of electrons is an electric current that can be used to do work, such as turn a motor or power a light. A galvanic cell whose electrodes are zinc and copper submerged in zinc sulfate and copper sulfate, respectively, is known as a Daniell cell. Half reactions for a Daniell cell are these. Zinc electrode. Zinc zinc 2 plus plus 2 E minus copper electrode. Cu2 plus plus 2 E minus Cu. In this example, the anode is zinc metal which oxidizes to form zinc ions in solution, and copper ions accept electrons from the copper metal electrode and the ions deposit at the copper cathode as an electrode deposit. This cell forms a simple battery as it will spontaneously generate a flow of electric current from the anode to the cathode through the external connection. This reaction can be driven in reverse by applying a voltage, resulting in the deposition of zinc metal at the anode and formation of copper ions at the cathode. To provide a complete electric circuit, there must also be an ionic conduction path between the anode and cathode electrolytes in addition to the electron conduction path. The simplest ionic conduction path is to provide a liquid junction, to avoid mixing between the two electrolytes. 
The liquid junction can be provided through a porous plug that allows ion flow while reducing electrolyte mixing. To further minimize mixing of the electrolytes, a salt bridge can be used which consists of an electrolyte-saturated gel in an inverted U-tube. As the negatively charged electrons flow in one direction around this circuit, the positively charged metal ions flow in the opposite direction in the electrolyte. A voltmeter is capable of measuring the change of electrical potential between the anode and the cathode. Electrochemical cell voltage is also referred to as electromotive force or EMF. A cell diagram can be used to trace the path of the electrons in the electrochemical cell. For example, here is a cell diagram of a Daniel cell. Zinc, Zinc 2 plus, Cu2 plus, Cu first, the reduced form of the metal to be oxidized at the anode is written. This is separated from its oxidized form by a vertical line, which represents the limit between the phases. The double vertical lines represent the saline bridge on the cell. Finally, the oxidized form of the metal to be reduced at the cathode is written, separated from its reduced form by the vertical line. The electrolyte concentration is given as it is an important variable in determining the cell potential.